Um, it's well, it's um, it's uh, it's it's a lens. Brian James, that Micro Four Thirds guy with you once again. Good to see you here on the channel. And today I'm going to bring you, be bringing you a, a long-term review of what I've, a lens I've had for a good while. The f1.7 25mm Lumix lens. The little plastic fantastic of the Micro Four Thirds world. About £150 UK, similar sort of price in the US in dollars. And um, it's the, the standard sort of workhorse that um, I use now and again. And uh, it's one of those sort of lenses that I always say you should have in your kit bag. So let's have a look and see how we get on with it. It's attached by G9 here, but I use it on all sorts of things. So let's have a little look how I've got on with using this over the last couple of years. Well, the lens itself, let's have a look at the, the lens. As I say, I've got it attached to the, the G9 here. The lens is a straightforward plastic bodied lens. There's good and bad on plastic bodies. One of the things that I do like about plastic bodied lenses is they do tend to bounce, they don't dent, they bounce. And it's such a light lens, it's about 125 grams in weight, that really it has to be dropped from a fair height before it'll cause any damage. The lens isn't all plastic though, even at this budget price it does have a metal mount, which I do tend to like. I'm not really bothered about plastic mounts insofar as um, worry about breaking, but what I do find is they do wear a little bit more. I do tend to notice a few more sort of wear characteristics on plastic mounted lenses, especially if you're the sort of photographer who takes them off and puts them back on again regularly. Um, so great little lens, plastic body, uh, not a bad plastic, it's not an expensive plastic, but it's cheap and cheerful, does the job, uh, and a, a, a metal mount. Now I've made a few notes because there's a lot on this lens. It's cheap. Now what I mean by cheap, I've said it's about £149 on average in the UK. Now to a lot of people that's a considerable amount of money. So when I'm talking about something being cheap or inexpensive in the lens sort of uh, stakes, and the photography stakes full stop, it's in comparison to what else is out there. I've always been a, pla a fan of the plastic fan fa fantastic nifty 50 as they call it in the full frame sort of area. This is the, the Micro Four Thirds version, the 25mm. And why I'm such a fan of this is when I go back all those years until I, when I first got my very first SLR camera, um, it was, well my father got the first SLR camera in our family which was an old Zenit E and it came with a screw on 50mm lens. When I got my first Olympus OM-1 it had a 50mm lens on that one. 50mm is about the closest or maybe a little bit less than 50 millimeter um, on the 35 millimeter uh, film format or on what we class as full frame. That's an equivalent sort of um, field of view to what we have as human beings. Now obviously in the micro four thirds, our sensors are a quarter of the size. So our crop factor on this is about one to two. So a 25 millimeter lens is the equivalent of the nifty 50. And what the beauty of these is it gets you into the idea of doing um, photography where you can get low light. This one's at f1.7 uh, maximum aperture. You can get low light which means you can get an awful lot of places that the kit lens won't get you and it also is small, it's light, it's easy to manage and it gives it a really good useful focal range for general photography. Now I've got a few notes here because I'm as you can see I'm out at uh, Talking Town. We've got the, the boats in the background. They've been out sailing this afternoon. So I'm going to go through a few of my uh, notes that I've made on this. So if I keep on looking down you'll understand. But as I say, it's it's a small, cheap lens, inexpensive lens. I don't actually like the word cheap. Cheap to me suggests that something isn't of good quality. Well, this certainly is of good quality. So it's inexpensive at £149. It gives a really bright picture with that, with that f1.7 maximum aperture. It's got a really bright image on there and it's a good solid image. I found that you do get a little bit of um, light tail off towards the corners and I've discovered this over the years but again a lot of my work has been portrait work where I actually bring vignetting in. So to me it hasn't been a big issue. Unless you're going to be photographing uh, white walls or white backgrounds then you're probably not going to notice it and even then if I'm doing portraits against a white background I'm usually tend to touch those up afterwards to give a nice evenness anyway so you know it's it's not a big problem on that and it's not a big issue for the for the lens itself um, 
The filter mount on this is 46 millimeters, and so it's a very common sort of size for filters. And it gets you into the smaller filter packs as well. If you're using these, um, if you're using these push-in filter packs, you're getting onto the smaller ones. So again, one of the beauties of Micro Four Thirds, it's nice and easy for that. The lens is 52 millimeters long and 61 millimeters in diameter, so it's slightly wider than it is long. And as I say, it weighs about 125 grams. So to put this into your photo bag is absolutely no hassle whatsoever. It's small and easy, and it's small on the camera. If you're doing something like street photography, for instance, and you're using one of the, the pocket cameras, the, the not the not the DS not the DSLR shape cameras like the the EM1 or the um, the G9 that I've got, but if you're using one of the, the slimmer cameras, you'll find that it really does get lost in your pocket with this lens on. Now, one of the things I like about this lens is the autofocus. I find the autofocus really is good on Lumix cameras. Um, it's very very fast. It's very quiet. It's almost silent. And beats its predecessor, the, the F1. 0.4 version of this lens in my opinion on both the speed and the sound of it um, I I find it works really well with the contrast autofocus and the DFD the um, the, the depth from defocusing system on the Lumix cameras. Um, it works all right on the Olympus, I haven't really noticed any problems on that, but it is a little bit more sluggish I would say on the Olympus cameras when I put the two together. Um, very very short um, focal distance as well, gets down to about 0.25 of a metre and that gives us a 0.14 uh, magnification um, ratio as well. So we can get some fairly close-ups on this. Um, I do find that the lens is rather sensitive backlight as well. It does have a, a, a nano coating on the lens to try and stop um, light diffraction and to try and stop some of the problems. But I do find that if you have um, backlight use the, the supplied lens hood and it comes with a super little plastic lens hood with, with it so I would use that one. Now as I said earlier it does have something of a, a light roll off towards the corners and it also does it, uh, have a bit of a, a softness towards the corners. Both of these lessen as you get away from fully open though so as you get up towards the sort of f2.8 up towards f4 you do tend to find that the that it gets nice and sharp across the whole board and the the light does tend to be more even spread <clears throat> so you don't tend to get too many of the problems. It's only when you're using the lens wide open. Now the lens wide open does give you f1.7 which is a really nice quick speed for somebody who's wanting to get into using prime lenses, wants to get into some of the low light areas but just wants something without spending a fortune on it. I think it's going to be ideal for that. I have heard a few people having problems with focus breathing, that's where as you change the focus the actual focal length of the lens changes ever so slightly, but again I haven't really noticed that myself and I've always found it be spot on. Some of the reviews have said that it does tend to slightly misfocus and be a bit soft um, at times and I don't know if that's just on the cameras that they used or not. Um, one problem if you do like taking it out in the rain and doing things in bad weather, it's not weather sealed. I can't see any signs of um, rings, of any sort of sealing rings around the camera at all. So be careful if you are taking it out. Panasonic Lumix do not claim it to be weather sealed. So just be a little bit savvy on that. But again, it's a nice small lens, so it's easy to keep fairly well sheltered. Um, I did find a few problems though with chromatic aberration. Um, or as one of the pupils I used to teach, uh, a little bit of entry level of photography used to call it colonic irrigation. I've got colonic irrigation on my photos. Um, but, <laughs> but chromatic aberration, that bit where you get the, the, the magenta and the green starting to put edges on different, on, uh, different things as you get them in. I haven't found it to happen on any, any of my Lumix cameras, my G9 and my GX8. I haven't really used it on the GX1, so I can't tell you on that, but certainly using it on the uh, Olympus EM1 Classic, the Mark I of the EM1, um, I do find that um, chromatic aberration can be quite prominent in some of the shots and I'm just wondering if maybe Lumix have managed to get that out in the in-body um, uh, in in-body adjustments for the lens. I haven't really noticed it as much on the EM1 Mark II but there again I haven't really put it through its paces on that camera properly to see if that's the case but certainly in the EM1 Mark I, the EM1 Classic, it's, it's, I've had a few circumstances where we've had quite a big quite a bad uh, chromatic aberration on this lens. So if you are thinking about this one, it may be worth looking towards putting it on the Lumix cameras. And if you have the Olympus, maybe going down the Olympus route, which I'll touch on to in a few moments.
Now before I do go any further, if you're enjoying these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, there's a box underneath, and if you hit the notification bell to get notifications of every time I upload a new video, then that will put them through for you there. Also, if you are enjoying it, um, if you want to help support the channel and keep more of these videos coming, there's a PayPal link if, below if you want to um, buy me a cup of coffee, you can make a donation there, and a great thank you to everybody who has, you really are making this channel work, so thank you very much. Also, I hit the 3,000 subscriber um, barrier the other day, so again, to each and, one of, each and every one of you subscribers, each of the ones who are in the Micro Four Thirds Guy Club, if you like, uh, we're a great little community. If you haven't subscribed, come and join us because there's some really, really good people on there. And if you do, have a look down through some of the subscribers <clears throat> because you'll find that some of those are absolutely incredible video makers in their own right. Have a look at some of their videos. So, I've said about the Olympus. Now, the Olympus have a, a similar lens out as an f1.8, so ever, ever, ever so slightly slower as a lens. Really, you're not going to notice the difference on that. Um, the difference on the, the lens itself, it falls very much into a direct comparison category. And I would say the Olympus has the edge on build quality. It's, it's got more of a metallic feel. It's a, a little bit sturdier feel than the, the um, Panasonic. It feels a bit classier than the Panasonic. <clears throat> but it's, so it should because it retails at about £280 in the UK compared to the 150 or so, the 149 for the Lumix that I'm doing here. Now, I would suggest if you are using Olympus it may be worth looking down that route to go for the Olympus one because of what I've said about the chromatic aberration but whatever it is try it on your camera first again the chromatic aberration hasn't been a big issue for me you can get an awful lot of the chromatic aberration out in post-production on something like um, Lightroom or Photoshop so it's not a it's not a, uh, a deal breaker altogether but sometimes you might have to put a bit more effort into getting the shots that you want so generally I think the, the, the camera works really well. Um, the construction of it, as I say, is plastic, but there are a few bits and pieces in, say, which are, uh, are nice to know. It's um, the lenses, for those people who like this. I've, I've never really understood why punters who are going out there necessarily to take photographs are really interested in this, but I know some people are, so um, there's nine, nine elements. Right, I shall start again. There are nine elements arranged in seven groups, of which two are spherical lenses and one is an ultra-high refractive lens. Uh, basically what that means is it's just doing an awful lot in the lens to try and keep the image as good as possible and to get it as, uh, to reduce as much distortion as you can and to stop refraction internally um, uh, as how the light comes through to keep the image that hits on the centre as true as possible. Um, Overall, what's my thoughts on it? Well, as I say, I've had this lens for a couple of years now. It's one of the first lenses I bought in Micro Four Thirds after having a standard kit lens. I was persuaded to go on the Micro Four Thirds a few years ago uh, by, my, by my friend Joe in um, Wilkinson's cameras. And I got the, the, the sort of kit zoom lens just to try it. I wasn't sure about going into the format altogether properly. So the first lens I actually bought for myself was this lens. Two reasons. One, as I say, it was inexpensive, and two, it's a sort of lens that it will do a huge amount of shots. If you look, there's a link above, but if you have a look at my um, my video on the Dandy, where the, the line between uh, north of Brampton, um, which I did uh, uh, one of my photo walks on, I mentioned in there the fact that although I was using a zoom lens, the majority of the time, when I looked back through the, um, through the EXIF information, the majority of the shots I'd taken tended to be round about the 25 mil, which is equivalent again to that 50 mil full frame or 35 millimeter film. It's that sort of standard sort of um, width of view, that standard sort of um, viewpoint that you have as a normal human. And it tends to be something we fall back on. So with a uh, 25 mil lens on a Micro Four Thirds camera, I really don't think it can go wrong. It's a great entry level lens for somebody who's starting on, the, on photography and just want to start that little bit of expansion and push the bounds to get lower light and to be able to work out what to do with a prime lens. It's one of those lenses as well which as I say if you have it in your camera bag it's not really costing you in size and weight but it's one of those ones that you can just stick it on your camera and go out and take photographs for the pure pleasure of it. And also what I tend to do with this lens is I'll quite often go out with this lens on and no other gear just one camera one lens and I'll go out and challenge myself to go out and take some interesting photos with it under those limited conditions. It's a little bit like when I first started with the, with the photography as I mentioned earlier on. So I hope you've enjoyed this. There will be a few photographs at the end taken on this lens just to give you some examples and they'll all have been taken on uh, either the AM1 Classic or the G9. I'm not going to tell you necessarily which one's which but um, 
have a look and see what you think of them. They are just examples of this, but I would seriously suggest if you're after entry into uh, prime lens territory, especially if it's something which is a little bit unusual to you and you really want to, uh, to just dip your toe in the water, I don't think you can go much, much worse than this lens. And also, it's a good lens, so the resale, if you don't like it, the resale value on it's pretty good, so you, you don't lose too much money in the bargain. Once again, my name is Brian James, I'm Micro Four Thirds Guy. Hope you've enjoyed this quick review of my Lumix F1.7 25mm lens. Whatever you do, keep on taking your camera out, keep on taking photographs, and keep on enjoying your photography. Until the next time, see you soon. Bye bye.